Many households lost internet connectivity as a result of the major storms Harvey, Irma, and Maria last summer. However, another threat to the internet is simply rising sea levels. Well, some is already happening, says the narrator. Carol Barford of the University of Wisconsin-Madison is a biogeochemist. There's a lot of evidence out there that demonstrates the coast's water level is increasing, he says. And, she claims, this will cause huge internet connectivity issues in major coastal cities such as New York, Seattle, and Miami. Using a map of worldwide internet networks and NOAA data on sea level rise, Barford and her colleagues predicted that threat. So there are two maps, one showing where the internet is and the other showing where the flooding is. And there are issues where they are stacked, when they intersect. The researchers suggest that in 15 years, 4,100 miles of fiber optic cable might be underwater, based on NOAA's severe sea level rise projection, which is recommended for forecasts involving long-term infrastructure like this. Additionally, 1,100 internet hubs might be encircled by water. Remember, unlike transoceanic cables, our land-based infrastructure is not watertight. Seawater gets in, and cabling isn't designed to function in that environment. As a result, transmissions will be disrupted and lost. It's possible that the infrastructure may degrade. The findings were presented at the Applied Networking Research Workshop in Montreal this week, where they were peer-reviewed. Large internet service providers, such as AT&T, CenturyLink, and IntelliQuint, are also at risk, according to the authors. If these forecasts come true, internet businesses would need to fortify their networks as quickly as possible, according to the experts. Alternatively, we may lose service during an emergency, exactly when we need it most. Many households lost internet connectivity as a result of the major storms Harvey, Irma, and Maria last summer. However, another threat to the internet is simply rising sea levels. Well, some is already happening, says the narrator. Carol Barford of the University of Wisconsin-Madison is a biogeochemist. There's a lot of evidence out there that demonstrates the coast's water level is increasing, he says. And, she claims, this will cause huge internet connectivity issues in major coastal cities such as New York, Seattle, and Miami. Using a map of worldwide internet networks and NOAA data on sea level rise, Barford and her colleagues predicted that threat. So there are two maps, one showing where the internet is and the other showing where the flooding is. And there are issues where they are stacked, when they intersect. The researchers suggest that in 15 years, 4,100 miles of fiber optic cable might be underwater, based on NOAA's severe sea level rise projection, which is recommended for forecasts involving long-term infrastructure like this. Additionally, 1,100 internet hubs might be encircled by water. Remember, unlike transoceanic cables, our land-based infrastructure is not watertight. Seawater gets in, and cabling isn't designed to function in that environment. As a result, transmissions will be disrupted and lost. It's possible that the infrastructure may degrade. The findings were presented at the Applied Networking Research Workshop in Montreal this week, where they were peer-reviewed. Large internet service providers, such as AT&T, CenturyLink, and IntelliQuint, are also at risk, according to the authors. If these forecasts come true, internet businesses would need to fortify their networks as quickly as possible, according to the experts. Alternatively, we may lose service during an emergency, exactly when we need it most. In the past several days, you've been reading about the devastating impact earthquakes have on human life. That's why seismologists have been working so hard to create earthquake prediction technologies. We can now quite accurately anticipate earthquakes, but the predictions simply point to possible hazard zones. 
they cannot anticipate the exact timing and location of an earthquake. Today, I'd want to expose you to three different prediction models. Using a first-order prediction model, seismic gaps are sought along fissures in the Earth's crust. For lengthy periods of time, a fault may display no seismic activity at all, which is known as a seismic gap. According to this notion, such locations are about to experience a massive shock. Model 2 relies on natural events, such as ground flies. The ground tilted before large earthquakes were seen using long cylindrical tubes filled with water. Scientists were able to accurately forecast the 1975 Haichen quake, the first successful earthquake prediction they had ever produced. Before the earthquake occurred, a million people were evacuated from that Chinese metropolis. We can't say this strategy has been mastered because it hasn't worked consistently. Based on this hypothesis, the third model proposes that significant earthquakes follow a sequence of smaller ones. Smaller quakes are used to determine the times when the chance of a much larger quake increases. While this system is now unable to forecast particular times and locations, it may become more accurate as it is refined. Right now, none of these models can be relied upon to make accurate predictions. In the past several days, you've been reading about the devastating impact earthquakes have on human life. That's why seismologists have been working so hard to create earthquake prediction technologies. We can now quite accurately anticipate earthquakes, but the predictions simply point to possible hazard zones. They cannot anticipate the exact timing and location of an earthquake. Today, I'd want to expose you to three different prediction models. Using a first-order prediction model, seismic gaps are sought along fissures in the Earth's crust. For lengthy periods of time, a fault may display no seismic activity at all, which is known as a seismic gap. According to this notion, such locations are about to experience a massive shock. Model 2 relies on natural events, such as ground flies. The ground tilted before large earthquakes were seen using long cylindrical tubes filled with water. Scientists were able to accurately forecast the 1975 Haichen quake, the first successful earthquake prediction they had ever produced. Before the earthquake occurred, a million people were evacuated from that Chinese metropolis. We can't say this strategy has been mastered because it hasn't worked consistently. Based on this hypothesis, the third model proposes that significant earthquakes follow a sequence of smaller ones. Smaller quakes are used to determine the times when the chance of a much larger quake increases. While this system is now unable to forecast particular times and locations, it may become more accurate as it is refined. Right now, none of these models can be relied upon to make accurate predictions. Many concerns about ATMs were made in the early days of their use. After the consumer has collected their money, they can then swipe their credit card from the machine. Because anybody could see one's account information, this led to an increase in the number of individuals misplacing their cards. Reprogrammed ATM machines in the UK now require consumers to take their debit cards before they may withdraw cash. It will therefore be less likely for them to forget the money, as that was the primary reason they used an ATM. Even yet, it is not uncommon for people to forget to bring their cash with them. If you misplace your card, you run the risk of losing access to your bank account, which is even more serious.
many concerns about ATMs were made in the early days of their use. After the consumer has collected their money, they can then swipe their credit card from the machine. Because anybody could see one's account information, this led to an increase in the number of individuals misplacing their cards. Reprogrammed ATM machines in the UK now require consumers to take their debit cards before they may withdraw cash. It will therefore be less likely for them to forget the money, as that was the primary reason they used an ATM. Even yet, it is not uncommon for people to forget to bring their cash with them. If you misplace your card, you run the risk of losing access to your bank account, which is even more serious. Having spent several weeks with you in this pottery workshop, I have no doubts about your progress. We're hosting a pottery class here at the college next month, and I thought you might be interested. Ceramics Monthly just named Ferguson one of the world's top potters, and she'll be teaching a seven-day course at the Leisure Center. In the session, participants will be able to work directly with Kate in order to improve their approaches and talents, she has promised me. Due to the workshop's limited capacity of 18 potters and advanced students, everyone will get individualized care and attention. A picnic at the end of the program, which is often attended by all workshop participants, costs $175 and includes all of your materials. In order to reserve a spot, a $50 deposit is necessary, with the remainder of the tuition due by May 15th. As a side note, the Van Howe Chemical Company is contributing the clay for this session. Call the Recreation Center at 5,553,080 to sign up for the workshop. You should definitely take advantage of this chance. Having spent several weeks with you in this pottery workshop, I have no doubts about your progress. We're hosting a pottery class here at the college next month, and I thought you might be interested. Ceramics Monthly just named Ferguson one of the world's top potters, and she'll be teaching a seven-day course at the Leisure Center. In the session, participants will be able to work directly with Kate in order to improve their approaches and talents, she has promised me. Due to the workshop's limited capacity of 18 potters and advanced students, everyone will get individualized care and attention. A picnic at the end of the program, which is often attended by all workshop participants, costs $175 and includes all of your materials. In order to reserve a spot, a $50 deposit is necessary, with the remainder of the tuition due by May 15th. As a side note, the Van Howe Chemical Company is contributing the clay for this session. Call the Recreation Center at 5,553,080 to sign up for the workshop. You should definitely take advantage of this chance. All of our predecessors have been swallowed up by us and we are now a huge, fast-moving ship that is heading towards the future. It moves faster, farther, and heavier than any other vehicle ever built. Not all of the ship's hazards and hazards can be predicted, but we can read her compass bearing and headway, comprehend the ship's design, track record of safety, and the capabilities of her crew to some extent. Plot a prudent track across the next narrows and bergs, I believe. And, in my opinion, this must be done immediately. Because of the number of shipwrecks that have occurred in the area. Not only is the ship wear on the biggest ever, but it's the only one remaining. Everything we've done since our brains began to develop will be in jeopardy if we don't act wisely in the next years. Humans, like other species, have forged their place in the world by trial and error, unlike any other creature. We can no longer afford the luxury of mistake since our presence is so massive. The globe has shrunk so much that we can no longer be forgiven for our faults, no matter how enormous.
all of our predecessors have been swallowed up by us and we are now a huge, fast-moving ship that is heading towards the future. It moves faster, farther, and heavier than any other vehicle ever built. Not all of the ship's hazards and hazards can be predicted, but we can read her compass bearing and headway, comprehend the ship's design, track record of safety, and the capabilities of her crew to some extent. Plot a prudent track across the next narrows and bergs, I believe. And, in my opinion, this must be done immediately. Because of the number of shipwrecks that have occurred in the area. Not only is the ship wear on the biggest ever, but it's the only one remaining. Everything we've done since our brains began to develop will be in jeopardy if we don't act wisely in the next years. Humans, like other species, have forged their place in the world by trial and error, unlike any other creature. We can no longer afford the luxury of mistake since our presence is so massive. The globe has shrunk so much that we can no longer be forgiven for our faults, no matter how enormous. Today, I'd want to look at some study on what drives individuals, and in particular, what is known as the mindset, or, to put it another way, the mental attitude that highly driven people have. And, of course, the attitude of those who aren't as motivated as they once were or who have lost their motivation. Motivation is obviously important for performance, but that doesn't tell us where it originates from. Why do some individuals work hard and succeed while others might work just as hard and fail? Why are some people devoted to their job while others aren't? Finding solutions to this issue would be highly beneficial to educators as well as other people in many fields. Businesses, for example, have long assumed that financial incentives such as bonuses, benefits, and salary raises are the most effective motivators. While this is true to some extent, what we call the mental attitude is more significant. It's been tough to figure out what motivates people since drive and the ability to work hard might be misconstrued for skill, as if it's a gift. Either you have it or you don't. People who think this have a stuck mindset and will not only perform below their potential, but their attitude will also affect their entire outlook on life. Some argue that if talent is something that people are born with and you're unlucky enough not to have it, then putting in all that additional effort for no meaningful payoff is pointless. However, studies have proven that putting in the hours leads to the same amount of success as skill. It's a matter of shifting from a fixed mindset to a development mindset, which involves viewing mistakes and failures as opportunities to progress. Today, I'd want to look at some study on what drives individuals, and in particular, what is known as the mindset, or, to put it another way, the mental attitude that highly driven people have. And, of course, the attitude of those who aren't as motivated as they once were or who have lost their motivation. Motivation is obviously important for performance, but that doesn't tell us where it originates from. Why do some individuals work hard and succeed while others might work just as hard and fail? Why are some people devoted to their job while others aren't? Finding solutions to this issue would be highly beneficial to educators as well as other people in many fields. Businesses, for example, have long assumed that financial incentives such as bonuses, benefits, and salary raises are the most effective motivators. While this is true to some extent, what we call the mental attitude is more significant. It's been tough to figure out what motivates people since drive and the ability to work hard might be misconstrued for skill, as if it's a gift. Either you have it or you don't. People who think this have a stuck mindset and will not only perform below their potential, but their attitude will also affect their entire outlook on life. Some argue that if talent is something that people are born with and you're unlucky enough not to have it, then putting in all that additional effort for no meaningful payoff is pointless. However, studies have proven that putting in the hours leads to the same amount of success as skill. It's a matter of shifting from a fixed mindset to a development mindset, which involves viewing mistakes and failures as opportunities to progress.
Supplementing with vitamin E has been established as a therapy for liver disorders. Hello, my name is Dr. James Meschino. Nash non-alcoholic steatohepatitis is a kind of fatty liver disease. Diabetics, pre-diabetics, and overweight persons are all susceptible to this. Non-alcoholic steatohepatitis Nash, is a disease in which the liver becomes inflamed without being induced by alcohol usage. It is caused by poor lifestyle choices, particularly a high-fat diet. Alcohol intake can, of course, lead to fatty liver disease. However, as a result of the obesity pandemic, an increasing number of individuals are acquiring fatty liver disease, which is caused by poor eating habits and a lack of exercise rather than alcohol. If left untreated, fatty liver disease can progress to cirrhosis. Scar tissue and fibrotic tissue develop in cirrhosis of the liver. Nodules begin to take the place of healthy liver tissue. Cirrhosis can progress to the point of liver failure, necessitating a liver transplant. Among modern culture, cirrhosis is the 10th largest cause of mortality in males. As of 2001, it was the 11th biggest cause of mortality among women in our culture. New medical recommendations for the treatment of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis were released in 2012. One of the most important suggestions was to take 800 IUs of vitamin E every day. Why? Vitamin E, on the other hand, is one of the only medications that has been demonstrated to repair some of the damage to the liver in those who have this disease. Vitamin E has lately been related to the prevention of liver cancer in persons who are at high risk for primary liver cancer, according to other research. Hepatocellular carcinoma is a kind of primary liver cancer. Supplementing with vitamin E has been established as a therapy for liver disorders. Hello, my name is Dr. James Meschino. Nash non-alcoholic steatohepatitis is a kind of fatty liver disease. Diabetics, pre-diabetics, and overweight persons are all susceptible to this. Non-alcoholic steatohepatitis Nash, is a disease in which the liver becomes inflamed without being induced by alcohol usage. It is caused by poor lifestyle choices, particularly a high-fat diet. Alcohol intake can, of course, lead to fatty liver disease. However, as a result of the obesity pandemic, an increasing number of individuals are acquiring fatty liver disease, which is caused by poor eating habits and a lack of exercise rather than alcohol. If left untreated, fatty liver disease can progress to cirrhosis. Scar tissue and fibrotic tissue develop in cirrhosis of the liver. Nodules begin to take the place of healthy liver tissue. Cirrhosis can progress to the point of liver failure, necessitating a liver transplant. Among modern culture, cirrhosis is the 10th largest cause of mortality in males. As of 2001, it was the 11th biggest cause of mortality among women in our culture. New medical recommendations for the treatment of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis were released in 2012. One of the most important suggestions was to take 800 IUs of vitamin E every day. Why? Vitamin E, on the other hand, is one of the only medications that has been demonstrated to repair some of the damage to the liver in those who have this disease. Vitamin E has lately been related to the prevention of liver cancer in persons who are at high risk for primary liver cancer, according to other research. Hepatocellular carcinoma is a kind of primary liver cancer. Winston Churchill was a British politician famous for his ship of the United Kingdom during World War II. He was also a Nobel Peace Prize nominee, winner of the 1953 Nobel Prize for Literature and the first person to be made an honorary citizen of the United States. Churchill was born in 1874 in Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire, England. His father was a prominent conservative politician from the aristocratic family of the Duke of Marlborough. Churchill lived in Dublin until he was six then attended several schools in England, where he struggled academically. He then enrolled in the army and actively sought out military action and began to take an interest in war correspondence. In 1895 Churchill traveled to Cuba to observe the Spanish army fighting the Cubans. 
He then saw active service in India and Sudan and was then named as a conservative candidate for the Oldham constituency in England. He was unsuccessful in his political campaign, so he obtained a commission to act as a war correspondent in the Second Boer War in South Africa. He was captured and imprisoned in a prisoner of war camp in Pretoria in South Africa but escaped and rejoined his troops and continued fighting. He then returned to England and published his experiences and once again stood for the Oldham constituency in the general election of 1901. Winston Churchill was a British politician famous for his ship of the United Kingdom during World War II. He was also a Nobel Peace Prize nominee, winner of the 1953 Nobel Prize for Literature and the first person to be made an honorary citizen of the United States. Churchill was born in 1874 in Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire, England. His father was a prominent conservative politician from the aristocratic family of the Duke of Marlborough. Churchill lived in Dublin until he was six then attended several schools in England, where he struggled academically. He then enrolled in the army and actively sought out military action and began to take an interest in war correspondence. In 1895 Churchill travelled to Cuba to observe the Spanish army fighting the Cubans. He then saw active service in India and Sudan and was then named as a conservative candidate for the Oldham constituency in England. He was unsuccessful in his political campaign, so he obtained a commission to act as a war correspondent in the Second Boer War in South Africa. He was captured and imprisoned in a prisoner of war camp in Pretoria in South Africa but escaped and rejoined his troops and continued fighting. He then returned to England and published his experiences and once again stood for the Oldham constituency in the general election of 1901. Frogs are a great next animal to see if you like the colourful animals we just saw. Frogs aren't usually associated with colour, but these particular specimens certainly are. Frogs from Central and South America are dart poisoned. Often yellow with black stripes or deep blue with black specks, their colours are eye-catching. These indentations have a purpose beyond aesthetics. Poisonous frogs offer a warning to predators. They release a poisonous chemical via their skin when frightened, which would readily kill any predator that tried to eat them. Because of their brilliant colors, most animals avoid hunting them. Moreover, these frogs have been sought for by hunters for millennia. The hunters, according to popular belief, were not interested in eating the frogs, rather, they were interested in the poison they carried. Poison was a common addition to their hunting arrows. Of course, today's most common method of hunting is with a firearm. Hunters are less interested these days in dart poison frogs than medical researchers. Because the toxin stimulates the neurological system, researchers hope they may create a new cardiac treatment from it. Scientists believe they may use it to stimulate a weak heart. However, studying these frogs has a drawback. When a wild animal is captured, it will continue to churn out poison until it dies. Those born in captivity, on the other hand, are incapable of producing any poison. Frogs are a great next animal to see if you like the colourful animals we just saw. 
Frogs aren't usually associated with color, but these particular specimens certainly are. Frogs from Central and South America are dart poisoned. Often yellow with black stripes or deep blue with black specks, their colors are eye-catching. These indentations have a purpose beyond aesthetics. Poisonous frogs offer a warning to predators. They release a poisonous chemical via their skin when frightened, which would readily kill any predator that tried to eat them. Because of their brilliant colors, most animals avoid hunting them. Moreover, these frogs have been sought for by hunters for millennia. The hunters, according to popular belief, were not interested in eating the frogs, rather, they were interested in the poison they carried. Poison was a common addition to their hunting arrows. Of course, today's most common method of hunting is with a firearm. Hunters are less interested these days in dart poison frogs than medical researchers. Because the toxin stimulates the neurological system, researchers hope they may create a new cardiac treatment from it. Scientists believe they may use it to stimulate a weak heart. However, studying these frogs has a drawback. When a wild animal is captured, it will continue to churn out poison until it dies. Those born in captivity, on the other hand, are incapable of producing any poison. Are you having sleepless nights? Many of us encounter troubles when attempting to fall asleep on a nightly basis. Without a great night's sleep, we could face various obstacles the next day. What is keeping you awake? Here are a few possible reasons. 1. Messy bedroom. 2. Naps throughout the day. 3. Skipping breakfast. These are just a few of the possible reasons. Here are three different ways to fall asleep quicker at night. Progressive muscle relaxation. This relaxation technique involves tightening and tense all the muscle groups that you can, and then relax them. By doing so repeatedly, we are able to promote physical relaxation which will also provide beneficial results in our day-to-day -day activities. Progressive muscle relaxation provides you with less tension within your muscles, lower blood pressure, decreased levels of anxiety, overall lower levels of fatigue. Through doing this exercise nightly you are physically relaxing yourself as well as calming your mind. Don't use your mobile as an alarm, we've all done it most of it still doing it on a nightly basis. The truth is using our mobile phones as an alarm clock is infected prying us from sleep. Most of us are keen to have our devices on us at all times whether we are exchanging texts or sending and receiving emails. By keeping our mobile devices within reach at night, we are keeping our minds and muscles engaged. Due to the engagement right before bed you will find yourself taking longer to fall asleep. Sleep is all about relaxation and while we all would like to remain involved those messages throughout the night are subconsciously waking us up in an action known as arousal. This is the process of the mind awakening without the body and in most cases we are completely unaware of it the next day. Listen to soothing sounds. Our bodies are more apt for sounds when we are conscious trying to fall asleep rather than when we are dozed off. If your sleeping problem is due to excessive background noise, you may find peace by listening to soothing background music. Once you find the routine that best helps you fall asleep, you should follow it consistently. Once our bodies are trained to follow our sleep habits, we will find ourselves falling asleep quicker. Are you having sleepless nights? Many of us encounter troubles when attempting to fall asleep on a nightly basis. Without a great night's sleep, we could face various obstacles the next day. What is keeping you awake? Here are a few possible reasons. 1. Messy bedroom. 2. Naps throughout the day. 3. Skipping breakfast. These are just a few of the possible reasons. Here are three different ways to fall asleep quicker at night. Progressive muscle relaxation. This relaxation technique involves tightening and tense all the muscle groups that you can, and then relax them. By doing so repeatedly, we are able to promote physical relaxation which will also provide beneficial results in our day-to-day -day activities. Progressive muscle relaxation provides you with less tension within your muscles, lower blood pressure, decreased levels of anxiety, overall lower levels of fatigue. Through doing this exercise nightly you are physically relaxing yourself as well as calming your mind. 
Don't use your mobile as an alarm. We've all done it. Most of it's still doing it on a nightly basis. The truth is, using our mobile phones as an alarm clock is infected prying us from sleep. Most of us are keen to have our devices on us at all times, whether we are exchanging texts or sending and receiving emails. By keeping our mobile devices within reach at night, we are keeping our minds and muscles engaged. Due to the engagement right before bed, you will find yourself taking longer to fall asleep. Sleep is all about relaxation, and while we all would like to remain involved, those messages throughout the night are subconsciously waking us up in an action known as arousal. This is the process of the mind awakening without the body, and in most cases, we are completely unaware of it the next day. Listen to soothing sounds. Our bodies are more apt for sounds when we are conscious, trying to fall asleep rather than when we are dozed off. If your sleeping problem is due to excessive background noise, you may find peace by listening to soothing background music. Once you find the routine that best helps you fall asleep, you should follow it consistently. Once our bodies are trained to follow our sleep habits, we will find ourselves falling asleep quicker.